All right, well, I thought I would get one more quick video in on this before I move on to the Tesla coil. Uh, will probably be the next video. Uh, what I try to do is alternate builds. I know I just put out a few clock build videos, but those were like, you know, those were quick and easy. Um, so I was fully intending on putting this on pause to work on the Tesla coil, but um, I had it out and I was wanting to get some more work done in here. So uh, let's focus in this area. If you look right in here, there's one detail I almost forgot about. And on the real car, there are little covers here. So if the car is ever set up for right-hand drive, those covers come off and all the stuff here gets put over there. So I want to make those little covers. Uh, here's a photo of what those look like. So to make those, I started with just a simple little sketch. And I'm using this material right here. I don't even know exactly what it is. And um, it just measures... 0.1 millimeter. So pretty thin stuff. It's easy to cut. Normal scissors will cut it. And um, easy to cut, easy to bend, easy to form. It's the same stuff I made the heat shield out of. But I just cut out a few pieces of this. And then what I did was I cut some pieces out of styrene to match the shape. So there's one. And then I cut a little piece that would fit in the hole and I just took the piece of that metal and put it on put that piece on top of it and I just hammered it together and that gave me that gave me that piece and then I did another one for that one and so when those get put on that uh, when those get put on those will go something like that and then there's one more. That didn't get a raised section. That just kind of goes on like that is all. So again, those three pieces will get glued on right there. And then I want to work on the intake and the air box. Um, as you can see, I got the oil filter in there. I don't remember if I showed that last video or not. But before I can do the air intake or the, the intake section here, I want to go ahead and run the wires for the starter because I don't think I'll be able to get down to there once those are on. So I want to run the wires for the starter. And I'll probably just use, uh, you know, I've got some of this. Uh, this is green. I've got some more wire that's the same diameter that's black. So I'll probably just run a strand of the green and the black together. Uh, trying to look at photos of what color the wires actually were. And going down at an area, they're really kind of dirty and grungy, and it's kind of hard to find. I haven't found a good picture that shows the wiring. So I'll either use two strains of black or the black and the green together. I think the black and the green will be okay. And uh, just eyeballing the diameter, I think that looks pretty good for starter wire size, maybe. Um, and what I'll do, more than likely, is I'll go in here with a little drill bit, and I'll just drill a couple of holes in the starter, and I'll wrap the wires around a couple of bolts and just kind of glue those into the holes so it looks like they're wired in there. I, but you know, like I said, honestly, once all of this is on, you probably won't even be able to see that. So I don't know why I'm trying so hard to make that look halfway decent. One other thing I want to show you, but since my lighting here is horrible, so I'm going to get a flashlight on here. I did add the vacuum. Uh, somebody left a comment in a previous video. I, I apologize, I forget who it was, don't remember, um, suggesting I put the little, man, I need, that lighting is horrible, uh, but suggesting I put the little vacuum assist piece on the distributor. So that's, that's on there. And of course the distributor has the little clips that hold it on. I did those a while ago. I don't know if I showed those or not. But anyways, um... So those pieces will go on, and next, the uh, the air box, we have these two pieces. Uh, it's kind of broken because I cut them apart from the kit, but that'll get glued on here. I still need to paint this area around here on the real one is like a rubber diaphragm, so I still need to mask that off and paint that a rubber color, and then that'll get glued on like so. 
I added those tubes uh, because looking at pictures of the real the real one uh, has these two tubes in here and those get positioned pretty much just like that pretty much just like that so I added those tubes on there also the the top here gets held in with little latches so I made I made three of these little latch assemblies and those will get glued on those will get glued on like that so I'm going to focus better so I got three of those that'll get glued on all the way around to hold the lid on those are just made out of a couple of pieces of brass just a couple of pieces of brass glued together tried to make all three the same which they're the same enough they're close enough that they'll work so those get glued on and then the way this uh, again looking at reference photos there's a little strap that'll get bolted on here that leaves a little gap there for a piece to go up so that kind of slips in over you know it'll just kind of slip in over a piece like that when it's in the car so that gets bolted on the little latches get glued on that still gets painted that gets glued on and then that can be ready to be installed and finally with the intake here and you'll notice i cut off the tubes that connect those together because i'm going to use aluminum tubes because it looks like you know that's how the real thing is so those aluminum tubes go in there like that so i'll have actual aluminum tubes connecting it but i also made the fuel supply rail for the carburetors that is just made out of copper wire and the little banjo fittings of course there'll be little bolts that go in there to connect those to the carburetors the banjo fittings and the t-fittings are just made out of solder let me show you real quick how that goes if you take a piece of uh, solder and this is acid core and that actually kind of helps but if you take a piece of this and you smush it in a pair of pliers like that go a little bit more like that and then you take one of these little uh, leather punch things I guess that's for leather take one of those and get that point as close to center line as you can and then squeeze it down what that does and it wasn't quite on center um, normally when I do this I'm using that so I can see what I'm doing better but for demonstrational purposes this will work and so uh, that does two things for you it gives you a nice spot for a drill that drill is way too big gives you a nice spot to start your drill and I just got have, have a one millimeter drill bit in here and lead drills pretty easily that drill bit is bent but um, so just drill that out the size of the bolt and uh, obviously I'm not doing that right now for real and then what you can do is trim that back to where you drilled the hole and I just have a sandpaper on a little angle here and then you can take that and you can sand that sand that to shape so you're going to sand that roundish and then Clip that off to the right length you want. And then go back in here, and here's where the acid core helps, because now you just drill in, and you're not you're not drilling too much of the solder, but you're drilling out the, uh, the flux that's in there. And that's the same size as the copper wire uh, that I'm using for the fuel lines. Now for the T-fittings, the T-fittings basically 
what I did was I took two pieces of solder and I just clamped them to this block like this. Clamped them to the block and then I went in with a soldering iron and normal solder and I just soldered those two together and uh, which is a little bit of a learning curve. It took a few tries and it's a little bit blobby when it's done but you just go under some sandpaper and files and you clean it up and then you you drill it out and then that will give you the uh, T fittings for here and there's again the the other banjo fittings and I'm going to use those one millimeter bolts will just get glued into those holes of the carburetors just like that and of course that other T fitting is going to go down to the uh, fuel filter bowl the fuel filter bowl so um, so I got to get all those installed oh, one more thing I forgot to show you I got these little uh, wing nuts here and I will paint those silver and I'll put a washer under it and those go those are going to go in there like that. Now there'll be a washer under them. Wash will be painted black from the pictures I've looked at. It's like a rubber, I don't know if it's rubber or not, but it looked like a black washer under the wing nut. But uh, So those will get painted, washers underneath of them, and those will go just like that. So anyways, I still got, I still have quite a bit of work to do, but basically everything I just showed you. That the latches, that, the rail, that, um, all of these pieces down here. So let me get all that stuff glued on and installed, and then we'll come back and I'll show you what all that looks like. All right, so I got the latches on there, and the wing nuts on there. So of course, once this all gets assembled, that'll be sitting on there kind of like that. I will add this strap after it's all installed just to make sure I get it in the right position. I got the fuel line installed which it fit a lot better before I actually tried to put it on. And yeah those are probably a little bit too big for scale but you know what? Once this is all on, you're never going to see that. So, why did I even do it? I don't know. It just seemed wrong not to. But, uh, so this is ready to go on. And I got the wires to the starter. And again, it's another one of those things where after it's all put together, you're never going to see that. It's not going to be visible. I got a little clip that I made out of this stuff. I just cut a little strip and bent it around to hold the wires in place. A little piece of tape to hold them out of the way there. And I got the fuel line coming from the filter bowl. And that wraps around the back side of the filter bowl and up to there. So that should, when I install that, match up with that T-fitting right there. And then once that's installed, I can install the uh, air box and, uh, you know, that and the uh, air filter box thing. And then I will do the, uh, the spark plug wires. I don't want to route those yet because I want to make sure I don't make them in the way of this. So I want to put that on first, then I'll route the spark plug wires. But, um, yeah, so let me get that stuff on. Oh, and then I need to connect the throttle. And one thing I've noticed, when I look at photos of the real car, the throttle line bracket was almost perfectly in line with the throttle control here. 
So it's almost like this needs to be sitting out like that, which I know is wrong. Or that should have been in about a quarter inch. So I'm going to have to take some artistic license with connecting the, uh, the actual throttle control. So it almost seems like on this kit, it seems like everything over here is too spread apart and everything over here is too crunched together. So I don't know what's going on with the proportions. I don't know if it's me or if it's the kit, but it seems like I don't have near enough room over here and way too much room over here. So I don't know what's going on with it, but let me get all of that stuff put on and then uh, show you what it looks like. Okay, so I got the fuel line in. Now I will admit it's actually bigger than it should be. And, um, you know, the, uh, the banjo fittings, the T fittings, how far it goes out, you know, that should be a lot tighter up against here. But again, once it's all together, that'll never be seen. And uh, it'd be nice if that would focus better. So from the fuel filter, going around up to the T-fitting, to the fuel rail, to the carburetors. Again, none of that will be seen after the, the, the air filter box and intake box is all put together. And connected the throttle linkage. And yeah, the geometry of this kit is not right. I looked at some more photos and that should be over about a quarter inch. Um, so I don't know. I, I may do with the way it is. I'm not going to tear this apart and rebuild it over. That's not going to happen. So uh, at least the throttle linkage would work um, if it weren't for the fact that it's glued. But uh, Geometry-wise, at least it, it should theoretically work. So next step is to get this in and this. And uh, so we'll do that, and then we'll see what it looks like. All right, so again, I would be lying if I said that was easy, because that was kind of a pain in the butt. But there it is. And got the clip on that side. Called couple of bolts in it, little tab painted the same color as a car coming up from the floor. And it looks like, again from photos, that that's how it's held in on the real, on the real car. And like I said, can't really see much under that, but I hope it's all there. Now one thing that um, is always kind of hard to know with stuff like this is order of operations. And I'm hoping I didn't screw myself by not putting in the fuel supply to the filter before I put that in. So there's supposed to be a fuel line going into there, going into there, and that's coming from underneath here. So I'm going to have to route a fuel line under and behind the fuel or the uh, the air filter box to go up into here and hopefully I'll still be able to fish that in because I didn't think about that when I put the air box in. But there it is, it's in. My next step that I want to do is to wire the distributor, get all those wires from the distributor up to the spark plugs and then put all those chromed nuts up there and kind of just get that side Kind of just get that whole side finished for good before I move on to the battery over there and the rest of the brake lines and the wiring. So I think that'll be next video. Hopefully at that point, I'm hoping, I'll be ready to start with all of the suspension because I'm kind of looking forward to, to getting that. So anyways... Hopefully you guys like what you're seeing, and uh, stay tuned for more. But uh, until then, as always, thanks for watching.